Eventually, you don't have to do that. Then you start floating. You just know exactly. You start floating from one thing to another. Yeah, so that was like a little bit of an idea of how to use this movement, right? So that, that's an example I was trying to talk about how, you know, Chris, you know, the traditional martial art, rather is east or west, is, is good to kind of look at the history and look at the application before you decide whether something is good or is bad. Neither way it doesn't matter, um, but it's good to look at how things actually work first, right? Um, that's the same with like, I think we were talking about this before, like, hey, what do you do if a guy grabs you? Like every time I get that question, it's like, if you look at it from a very, very, very traditional point of view, then again it goes back to weapons. Once you throw a weapon into the mix, it completely changes the context, right? Any angle he likes. Usually I get that question, and people ask what would traditional martial art do against that, or ancient or tribal martial art. Whenever I get that question, I'm a little bit confused. Chris, sir, can you please tell me? Because, again, it's about context, right? If I use modern martial arts, I really hate labels, but modern martial arts, really popular, big rotation stuff, right? And Chris tried to grab, it's going to be very easy for him to take me down if he's pretty good at slipping, right? It doesn't matter how fast I go because he can see the telegraph of the big movement, right? Or if I try it again, it doesn't matter. As soon as I looked up there, I saw something in my face, right? But if I use tribal martial art, right? And it's all about weaponry. You can see the last part one and part two. Chris will give you the link in the description below. If I pull out a weapon, forget about machete and spear and axe, I just use the most, just a little net right? Go ahead, grab this. He doesn't want to, even though it's a training blade, because he doesn't want to get stabbed. This won't kill him, it's just a training blade, but it's aluminum and it hurts a lot. So that's why I think this kind of like question about what would tribal or traditional martial art do against a grab is not even a fair question. That's why like, you got the MMA champion, modern martial art Frank Shamrock. When he was in front of Home Depot, a crackhead, completely untrained, put a rusty little blade on him, he ran down the street. It doesn't mean MMA is not good, MMA is awesome. But it's a matter of context. Under the right context, even an untrained individual can make a multiple time champion run down the street. So modern martial art wasn't designed for a real situation like that, right? So when you start going, hey, what travel martial art do against a grab, he won't even dare to grab. If he does, he'll get cut. So, but then, even if you don't have blade, then it's no good then. That's, I disagree with that because even if I don't have a blade, if I start moving my empty hands as though I still have a weapon, because I've been trained with weapons, then to me, it gives me a better chance of not getting grabbed because I'm not doing big movements. So if I'm gonna go against Chris, and I'm gonna move my hands like a blade, Chris does whatever he wants to grab me. But imagine because I'm curving my hands like I have sticks or a knife, it was more difficult for him to grab me. Or again, he can't really move, right? He comes in like this, I move in, and I just start curving my hands around like that, right? I'm not hitting Chris hard. Them so if I go one more time, is that okay Chris? Yeah. I'm gonna go a little bit harder than usual. On the back you can't even get close and it starts to look fake. Because as soon as you push this one, the other one, it curves like a stick, right? Anyways, we'll get back and talk a bit more about it. All right, man. So that was just a brief demonstration, right? Um, the idea of tribal, ancient, traditional, whatever you want to call it, martial art, it's like humans see based on contrast, right? If I want to see an object, it's because of the empty spaces, the negative space around an object that allows me to see something, physically speaking, right? Mentally, we're the same. If we want to see something clearly, we want to contrast the opposite. That's how you see things most clearly. And the way to do that is to exaggerate both ends as big as possible, right? And that's why I brought up the fact that if you look at it historically, not an opinion, but a fact, around the world, all tribal martial art was weaponry. And that brings the point of context, which changes everything. There's no, like I'm not interested in the ego nonsense, like hey, what I do is better than someone else. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying as soon as you look at it historically, as soon as you put weapons in, it changes everything. Like a minute ago, when I start moving like I had a weapon, even with my empty hands, it gave me a better chance, right? 
not sure if that will help somebody else, but for me, if you actually train it. So it's important when you train it, be able to use a spear, use a sword, use an ax, use a cane, use a stick, use double sticks, use a knife, until they all become the same thing. And nowadays, like for Wing Chun, for example, I see a lot of people ignoring the six and a half point pull and the butterfly knives, Ba Chan Do. Instead, they focus a lot on empty hands because it's more practical, because you can't carry weapons around. But in my humble opinion and my experience, the opposite is true. Even if I don't carry those classical weapons around, by the very fact that I tr train with it, when I go back to empty hands, it changes all my angles, it changes all my lines, the energetics, my mechanics, everything. So when I, like, when we're teaching a course on my website, the level Wing Chun 1 to 6, even in Wing Chun level 1 to 4, I implant, I make sure I implant weapon concepts in there. I might not say it, but it's in there. So that way, when I do teach the Ba Chan Do and the pull, I always supplement it with other training, like sticks and cane and axe and spear. And that's how I teach it on our website and our courses. That way, our students will understand this, even if they can't verbalize it or articulate it, right? So that's really important. If you're interested in the work, it's on our website, at mchainkungfu.com. So keep that in mind, guys about so, the concept of the weapon and the linkage, right? That's what traditional or tribal actually mean. Tribal is actually a better word, because if you go all the way back, it's actually tribal, right? Yeah. Any other questions, Chris?